Hey guys, hope you are all doing okay. And this video is a showcase of a mini project I've been working on over this weekend. And so I built this app with MIT App Inventor that controls the brightness of these uh, three LEDs right here using Wi-Fi. So in this video, I'll give you an overview of how this mini project works. I will give you a simplified explanation of how the app sends data to the ESP32 of HTTP and how the ESP32 decodes the data to light up each one of the LEDs. But first, let's start with a quick demo of the app. And you can see that it has uh, these three sliders and this single button. With these sliders, I can control the duty cycle of the PWM signal that's driving the three LEDs, uh, red, green, and blue. And with the set color button, the app will access a specific URL that's running on the web server on this uh, ESP32 board right here. And so that URL contains the brightness values for each one of these free LEDs right here. And the ESP32 board will light them up accordingly. So if I set all the sliders to maximum, go please, set color, it will turn all the LEDs to maximum brightness. If I turn the sliders all the way to minimum, it will turn off all the LEDs. And you can do all sorts of different combinations with this. Um, close to zero, they will be pretty dim. Here's uh, full green and full blue. Oh, go please. There you go. Nice. Let's turn them all off now. So this project is uh, quite simple, but it's mostly a test trick for uh, this other project here, which is quite a bit more complex. So this is an RGB LED lamp built by a guy called uh, Great Scott over on YouTube, and he uses a ESP3266 to control a uh, constant current driver for driving this 10 watt RGB LED right here. And I'm going to try to do basically the same thing, except I'm going to be using a uh, ESP32 uh, development board here. And I've even got a schematic right here to show you. So my idea for building a constant current driver circuit for uh, the 10 watt RGB LED chip is to use uh, three buck converters connected to a single power supply uh, here with three low value resistors in the outputs, which are used to measure current. So the current measurements are being fed to this uh, ESP32 microcontroller here, which will then uh, change the output voltage of the buck converters using a closed loop feedback system to maintain a constant current flowing through these three LEDs right here. But to be honest, I don't know if this design will work or not, but uh, more on that in another video. And the hardware for this project is uh, pretty minimal. We've got our ESP32 development board here. You've got uh, a red LED connected to GPIO 16, a green LED connected to GPIO 18, and a blue LED connected to GPIO 21. And we've got five volt power being fed through the USB port, which is stepped down to 3.3 volts uh, using the onboard regulator. And you should probably use some current limiting resistors for the LEDs as well. But as you can see, I'm not using any and I haven't had any problems so far. And you should probably use, use some 100 to 200 ohm uh, resistors for these LEDs right here. Um, I've used 390 ohms without any problems, so I guess that works too. All right, so now let's talk about how we're actually gonna control the brightness of our three LEDs right here using Wi-Fi. So as an example, suppose that in our app, the sliders are in this configuration right here. So the slider for uh, the color red is in the minimum position, the slider for the color green is right down the middle, and the slider for the color blue is in the maximum value. So in this case, we want to send a PWM signal with a 0% duty cycle to the red LED, a PWM signal with a 50% duty cycle to the green LED, and a PWM signal with a 100% duty cycle to the blue LED. And so for doing just that, we're going to tell our app to access this specific URL right here. This first part represents the IP address of our ESP32 board. We can use this address right here to access the web server that's running on our board in our local Wi-Fi network. Oh, and this uh, forward slash LED here is just for style points, really. But what really matters are these nine numbers right here. Each one of them represents the brightness values for each one of the LEDs. So the first three ones right here represent the brightness value for the red LED. The next three represent the brightness value for the green LED. And the next three represent the brightness value for the blue LED. Note that the uh, brightness values are represented on a scale from 0 to 255, which is uh, 2 to the 8th power minus 1. 
And I'm using this range here for two reasons. Well, for one, it's the duty cycle range that the uh, LEDC write function uses. Well, this is the function that we're going to use to uh, write PWM signals. And also, this range here is the same one that we use for digital 8-bit color representation using the RGB color space, which goes from uh, 000 all the way to 255, 255, 255. Or instead of using the decimal system, we could even use the hexadecimal system, and the color is black and white would look like this. All right, so now let's talk more in depth about how we're gonna handle the communication between our app, which is gonna act as a web client, and our ESP32 board, which is gonna act as a web server. And we're gonna use something known as HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, to handle uh, requests and responses between our web server and our web client. So just like in the previous example, let's suppose that the uh, sliders in our app are in this position right here. So our app is going to retrieve these numbers right here, which depend on the position of the uh, thumbs in the sliders. And our app is going to convert these numbers here into strings. And using the IP address of our ESP32 board, uh, our app is going to join all of these strings here into a single URL. In our case, it's going to be this URL right here. And it's going to use this URL to perform a HTTP GET request using the app's uh, web connectivity. Then the server will receive the request and it will decode it. The first line of an HTTP request is called the request line. The request line will specify the method, in our case GET, and it will also specify the URI. Now, the web server is running code that will store the incoming request in the string. In my case, I just called it header. And we can access any individual character from this line right here by just treating this string as an array. And we can use an index to retrieve any character we want. For example, index 0 will retrieve as capital G. Index 3 will retrieve us an empty space character. And index 2 will retrieve us a capital T character. And so if you take a look at the URI right here, we can use indices 9, 10, and 11 to retrieve the brightness values for the red LED. Similarly, we can use indices 12, 13, and 14 to retrieve the brightness values for the green LED and indices 15, 16, and 17 to retrieve the brightness values for the blue LED. But the brightness values are now stored in a string and we want to convert them to integers or numbers so that we can pass them on to the PWM generating function. And for that, we simply use the toInt function, which will convert our strings into integers. And so we have our final brightness values right here for the red, green, and blue LED, which we can just pass them to the LEDC write function to generate the appropriate PWM signals. And by the way, this is what the full HTTP request looks like. So again, the first line is what's known as the request line. And the next lines are known as headers. And by looking at the headers, we can get more information about our client by looking at the second line, for example. And by looking at the third line, we can see the IP address of our server. And this is what the server's response looks like. So the first line of an HTTP response is known as the status line. And following that, we have a couple of headers again. And by taking a look at the headers, we can actually see what type of content is transmitted along with the response. And in this case, you can see that the content is HTML code for displaying a web page. In future videos, we'll be going into more detail about what each line of the request and response actually mean. But for now, this is just an overview of what we're dealing with. Well, that's pretty much all I've got to show you right now, but uh, stay tuned because in the upcoming videos, I'll walk you through the Arduino code that's running on this ESP32. And we'll also talk about how you can program a simple Android app like this one right here. Stay safe, guys, and uh, keep on coding. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. And if you've got any questions, ideas, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to read them. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my latest content and click that bell over there to get notifications. That's it for now. See y'all later.